What up everybody? Back again here with our negative number unit. We're going to be looking at comparing rational numbers using a number line today. So let's dive under the water and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to compare two rational numbers by using the number line. So let's get started today. So our problem says order these numbers from least to greatest and it gives us four numbers, right? Five, three, zero, and eight. And although most of you could do this without showing any work, let's pull out our number line because that's really going to help you understand what our key thought is today. Here I have zero. There we go. I have three right here, five, and then obviously I have eight. And we all know zero is the smallest of those. Okay, so I'm going to write this with an inequality statement using my less than sign. So zero is less than three, right? That's my next smallest one, which is less than five, which is less than eight, right? Here's my inequality statement to order these from least to greatest. What I notice about my answer when I look at it on the number line, and this makes a lot of sense, is the smallest one is further to the left, and the biggest one is further to the right. And that makes a lot of sense because we know the bigger the number is, the further you are away from zero. So as you move to the right, you're going to be getting bigger. And then as you move to the left, the value of the numbers are going to become smaller. And the same thing is true with negative numbers. As we move further down the number line to the left, the value of those numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller because they're further away from zero. This leads us to our key thought today. As you move to the right, the value of the numbers get bigger. And as you move to the left on a number line, the value of the numbers gets smaller. And that's something we all know. We don't think about it often when we're comparing numbers. You already know that. But we have to name it today so that way when we are doing our number line, we understand what's happening. So our next question says, order these numbers from greatest to least. But we have all sorts of rational numbers here. We have whole numbers, we have positive, we have negative, we have fractions, okay? And this is why it's so important to understand our key thought. Because when you look right here at negative seven and a half or negative seven and five tenths, and you look at negative five, you might think that negative 7.5 is bigger than negative five, right? Because if they were positive, that would be true. If you have $7.50, that means you have more money than someone who has $5, right? But our brain is so used to thinking in positive that sometimes it's good to label them on the number line so that you can really take a look. Because if you put seven and a half on the number line, right, seven and five tenths, it would be right here. Okay, let me label that, seven and five tenths. And if you put negative five on the number line, it would actually be right here. So when they're in the negatives, seven and five tenths is smaller than negative five because it's further to the left on the number line. This is gonna make more sense when you start thinking about real world scenarios, which we're gonna do next lesson. But a quick one would be, okay, if I owe somebody $7.50 and you owe them $5, who owes more money? Who has less money? It'd be me because I owe someone $7.50, okay? I owe them more money, which means I have less money. So it makes a little bit more sense when you think about it in real world context. But the key today is using the number line to help you, especially when you get to negatives. Because like we said, we're so used to thinking in positives that if we're rushing through this, we might make a mistake. So let's go ahead and finish labeling the rest of them. Okay, so I have positive five right here. All right, I have, there we go. So I've labeled all these. I had seven halves. All right, well, I need to turn this into a mixed number so I can really think about that. So if I turn seven halves into a mixed number, that's going to be three and one half. So I'm gonna count over three and then go another one half. There we go, okay, done with that one. And then negative two and one half, I'm gonna count over two to the left because my negative sign was telling me go to the left. And then one more half to the left. And so here would be negative two and one half. So for this one, I wanna go greatest to least. So my first thought is, what's the furthest number to the right? And that's gonna be five. So the five is the biggest number on here. And I'm gonna say that's greater than, my next one would be three and one half, which was really seven halves. So I'll write seven halves. And then that's greater than the next one furthest to the right, which would be negative two and one half. There we go. 
and then I go negative 5, and then my smallest one was negative 7 in 5 tenths. So here's my inequality statement that to answer the question, order these numbers greatest to least. So here's the key thing we want you to take from this. Especially when you're doing negative numbers, it's important to graph them on the number line so you can visually see where they're at in relation to each other. The furthest one to the left is going to be the smallest. The furthest one to the right is going to be the biggest. Let's take a look at an I do problem. So our I do problem says compare these rational numbers using less than, greater than, or equal to by putting them on the number line. All right? Write an explanation beneath. So we're going to write a little sentence to explain our thinking. A great educator once told me writing is the evidence of thinking. So if you can come up with the answer and get it correct, you should be able to write and explain how you came up with it. So what we want to do is we want to complete this inequality statement with either less than, greater than, or equal to. So here I have negative 4, so I'm going to move to the left of my 0, 4 units, right? The negative signs tell me what direction to move, so negative 4 is going to be right here, all right? Then I have negative 5, so I'm going to move 5 units to the left of 0. Again, that's what the negative signs tell me to do, and that's going to be right here. And I can see that negative 5 is less than negative 4, or you could say negative 4 is greater than negative 5. Again, this is one of those ones we want to make sure we show on the number line, because if you're thinking in the positive, you would say, oh, 5 is bigger than 4, so I'm going to write down negative 4 is less than negative 5. But I want to write an explanation. So the further you move to the left on the number line, the smaller the value. So my explanation is just going to say negative 5 is further to the left of the negative 4, which means it has a smaller value. Okay, again, showing your thinking on the number line and then writing about it. Let's take a look at a we do problem. So our we do problem, same exact type of question, except now we're going to be comparing negative 4 halves and negative 2 and 5 tenths. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn this into either a whole number or a mixed number. Okay, I don't want to leave it as an improper fraction. It's kind of harder for me to think about. So 4 halves would just be 2, right? So this is going to be negative 2 and then negative 2 and 5 tenths. Again, showing your work on the number line. So here I have negative 2. I'm going to be moving left of the 0, 2 units, 1, 2, and here's where negative 2 would be. My next one is negative 2 and 5 tenths, or negative 2 and a half is the equivalent fraction. So I'm going to be moving 2 units to the left, that's what the negative sign told me, and then another half of a unit. So I'll do this one in red so you can kind of see it because they're close together. So here's where negative 2 and 5 tenths would be. So I know because negative 2 and 5 tenths is further to the left, that negative 2 is greater than negative 2 and 1 half. And again, the explanation that I'm going to write down is negative 2 and 5 tenths is further to the left, which means it is a smaller number. Again, using the terms further to the left and further to the right to prove your answer. Let's take a look at this U-Tribe problem. So it says, Shakaya swam the 100 meter freestyle in 2 and 2 tenths minutes. Faith swam the 100 meter freestyle in two minutes. Who swam the 100 meters in less time? All right, so this is a you try problem. So if you're ready, go ahead and pause the video, solve it, and then push play to check your understanding. If you're not there yet, that's okay, right? Growth mindset, let's do it together right now. So hopefully you just paused it and now you're checking your work. I'm going to use our sides check strategy here, which we love at instruct beat So the question says, who swam the 100 meters in less time? My statement's going to say, blank swam the 100 meters in less time. So I'm going to go back. I'm looking for anything about swimming the 100 meters. So it says Shakaya swam the 100 meter freestyle in two and two tenths minutes. Faith swam the 100 meter freestyle in two minutes. Who swam the 100 meters in less time? And I know when it's asking you for less time, this is asking you for the smallest number. So now I've did my statement. I've identified. I'm going to develop my plan on my number line right here. So here I have faith at two minutes. So I'll label, mark that right there with two minutes. And then Shakaya was two and two tenths. Now my number line split into holes. To show two and two tenths, I'm going to have to make an estimate. I know it's going to be a little bit further than two, but not quite to two and a half. So I'd say Shakaya was probably about right here in the blue. So Shakaya is blue. Faith is green and I was looking for the smallest number, right? Because I want to see who swam it in the least amount of time. And so Faith is further to the left. Shakaya is further to the right. 
that means I know Faith swam the 100 meters in less time because her number is further to the left on the number line, which makes it smaller than Shakaya's number, okay? And so again, using the number line to prove your thinking. You might have been able to figure this out lining up your decimal places and comparing the numbers, but we want to show the work on the number line today to visualize our thinking. If you got that right, you will be excited for the challenge zone! Love the challenge zone. It says, Madeline May said this statement. I know that 400 is bigger than 300, so negative 400 is also bigger than negative 300. Is she correct or incorrect? Or as they say in the Dan Levitard show on ESPN, see Oh no. All right, explain your reasoning. So don't just say it's incorrect or correct. Explain your reasoning, write down your answer in your notes by using the number line and then writing the little explanation. It only has to be a sentence long. You don't have to write a paragraph, but using writing as evidence of your thinking. All right, hopefully you just pause the video and you are rocking and rolling. You're ready to check your work. I see right here that my intervals are going to be 100, right? Because if this is 100, that makes it 200, then we have 300 and 400, okay? Negative 100, negative 200, negative 300, negative 400. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna plot these numbers on my number line. So it says, I know 400 is bigger than 300. All right, so here's 400, here's 300 obviously, okay? Just make the numbers a little bit bigger. And that is correct, right? Because 400 is further to the right than 300 is, which means it is a bigger value. It's further away from zero. It's further to the right, right? But if we mark negative 400 here, there we go, and negative 300, we can see that her answer was incorrect. But this is the thinking of a lot of people. We're so used to thinking in the positives, right? You have to mark it down the number line until you really get the hang of it negative 400 is less than negative 300 because it's further to the left. Just because you think in positives 400 is bigger than 300, that doesn't mean the same thing in negatives. So the explanation you would have written down is she is incorrect because negative 400 is further to the left than negative 300. You proved it on the number line. You wrote a little explanation. You're rocking and rolling. Here's what we want you to take with you today, right? As you move to the right, the value of the numbers get bigger. And as you move to the left, the value of the numbers get smaller. And this, that's true in both the positive rational numbers and the negative rational numbers. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We appreciate you spending your time with Instructed Beats. We know there's lots of different options and we love that you have chosen to watch this lesson with us today. Check out our negative number song, the rest of our negative number playlist, we love to have you follow us on all the social media accounts, subscribe on YouTube, like, share with a friend. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We appreciate you. Instructor Beats, out.